Hi everyone, Ron Kreider reporting for duty today. It is Monday. I have the numbers for you for October the 19th, my day 217. I've done 217 of these programs on the numbers since we started way back in March. A little bit of good news about the Dow. The Dow is at about 28.5, and the time is uh, 12.48 uh, on Monday. Some other interesting information, 15 days until the election day, 67 days until Christmas, 73 days left in this year. And I also need to remind you, somebody asked me the other day, when do the clocks change? Because it's dark in the morning. Clocks will change November the 1st. I'll remind you of that along the way. I also need to tell you, again, I don't put any commercials in here. Uh, these commercials that you see popping up, just hit the skip button. They were put in there by uh, uh, YouTube. That's how they get paid for this sort of thing. I will uh, I announce in advance, yes, I do have my uh, banana shirt on. People laugh at me and they say, oh, that's a, that is the worst looking shirt I've ever seen. Well, the color is not too great. I'll agree with that. But it is a nice shirt. It's a Columbia shirt and it's comfortable and it's really great for here in Florida. And it's because the banana shirt It's because I'm appealing, right? <laughs> okay. I said it. Nobody else can say that. All right. Here, here we go. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the numbers that are going on today. We have a little bit of green on the screen, actually a little bit more than a little bit. Uh, Florida reported an increase of 1,707 cases of COVID-19 today, along with 54 additional residential deaths. The state is now up to 756,727 confirmed cases of COVID-19 and 16,021 resident deaths, according to the dashboard here in Florida. At least 201 non-residents have also died in Florida, and the state has reported 47,001 25 hospitalizations attributed to COVID-19 since the start of the outbreak. The state's positivity rate for yesterday's testings was 4.86, according to the Department of Health. 4.86. Well, you're going to see, I'm going to say it's 4.83 someplace else, because it's always a little bit of a question as to what it is. Uh, the deaths, three in Martin County, one in St. Lucie County, none in Indian River County, likely occurred weeks ago, but weren't reported until the state completed its investigations. Those who died range in age from 64 to 91, and there were two men and two women, according to today's data. That brings the Treasure Coast death toll to 598 people, and a number of cases to 17,348 since the virus began back in March. So on the Treasure Coast, we're talking about 17,348. And the death toll on the Treasure Coast is 598. All righty, folks, that's, uh, those are the, uh, that's the information on the numbers. I'm going to put the numbers up here for you just to give you an idea. 55 for the entire state of Florida. People passed away in the past 24 hours. Yesterday it was 48, so that's up by 7. Uh, positivity rate, uh, the 1707. Yesterday it was 2539. So that's an improvement today of 832. The Seven-day moving averages, 84.71. That's my number, 84.71. That would mean that approximately 84 people passed away each day for the past seven days. That's a death, the average deaths. And as I said before, the positivity rate was on my chart is 4.83. Theirs was just a teeny bit different, but does need to be under 5%. So that's, uh, those are our numbers for today. You, I will give you the county-by-county county numbers at, just at the end of this little opening piece here. A couple of things I would like to suggest. Don't forget to push the like button. That's an important thing for me. Yeah, that's my paycheck. You push the like button and I get paid. I get paid in the form of uh, my ego, right? <laughs> I don't get any money for this. Absolutely no money whatsoever. And rem remember, I say every day, it's easier to wear a mask than it is a ventilator. This is so important. No, no cure. We have no cure right now for the COVID-19. And it's he's lurking out there. He can find any one of us. You can all sorts of very important people have gotten COVID-19. It, it, he's not selective. I mean, he, he'll go after anybody. He went after the president of the United States. He goes after anybody. 
It'll go after you, too, if you're not careful. And I'm going to keep saying this over and over and over again. This is a really important thing. Danny brought it to my attention a couple of weeks ago. And you kids out there that think it's kind of cool, hey, it's not a big deal. You get sick, you get over, it's like getting the flu. No big deal. Yeah, it's a big deal if you have end up with respiratory problems and things such as that. And there's like 1 in 10, 1 in 15. It's some pretty big number of people who have underlying issues after they get over COVID-19. Now, we haven't, it hasn't been around long enough for us to know exactly how long these things are going to last and so forth. We're just feeling our way along. It's You just don't want to get it. Don't think of it as getting a cold and you're going to get better because, yes, 99% of the people will get better, but some of you will end up with these underlying conditions. That's not a good thing. All right, weather forecast for the Treasure Coast here. Scattered thunderstorms and showers today. High 84 degrees. Winds east-northeast at 10 to 25 miles per hour. Chance of rain's about 60%. I'm seeing some of that 60% out there right now. And then tonight on Monday night, rain showers early with uh, evolving into more steady rain overnight. Low 77, winds east-northeast 10 to 20 miles per hour. And the chance of rain tonight is about 60%. Rainfall will be about a quarter of an inch this evening, so we're going to get some significant rain. And then tomorrow on Tuesday, scattered showers and thunderstorms, high 84, winds east at 10 to 20 miles per hour, and the chance of rain is about 50%. I do generally do these numbers for the people who live up north who are very interested in what the weather's like down here because you all who live here, you already know what the weather is. So those are the, um, uh, that's the information on the, the weather forecast and so forth for the Treasure Coast. You see the numbers are up here on the screen. And now I'm going to take you straight to the numbers department and I'll give you the county by county for the east coast of Florida. And I got a couple of things to add in here at the end. Here we go. All right, folks, here we go with the Monday numbers for October the 19th. We have a little green on the screen. In fact, we have quite a bit of green on the screen, but not green all the way around. So let's take a look at what's going on here with the deaths for today. In the past 24 hours, 55 new deaths in the entire state of Florida. Yesterday, it was 48. That's a uh, increase of only seven. But every one counts, so I shouldn't really say only seven. But yes, it is an increase over 48 from yesterday. Not a good thing. Now, taking a look at the positives. Yesterday, the positives were 2,539. Today, there's 1,707. The positives are down by 832. So that's where we get the green there. Then we come over here on the right-hand side of the screen. We take a look at the positivity rate. And I need to say this very clearly because... One of my critics misunderstood what I said here. This is the daily based on the number of tests today, the positives. So it's 4.83. That number needs to be under 5. That's the number that's the magic number. To, things are supposed to be heading in the right direction if you're under 5. We weren't supposed to be reopening anything if we were over 5. We have been over five for a couple of days, but we're okay. 4.83, now we hope that that number will come down. So that's that's a better number, all right? All right, okay. Dade County. Seven new deaths to report in the past 24 hours, 372 new positives. In Broward County, five new deaths to report, 170 new positives. Broward County is Fort Lauderdale. In Palm Beach County, seven new deaths to report in the past 24 hours, 57 new positives. And here we are in Orange County. Orange County is Orlando. Four new deaths to report in the past 24 hours, 168 new positives. In Brevard County, two new deaths to report, 30 new positives. In St. Lucie County, one new death to report, 17 new positives. St. Lucie County is Fort Pierce. Then in Martin County, that would be the Stewart area, three new deaths to report, eight new positives. And in Indian River County, that's where I am right now, no new deaths to report here in Indian River County, nine new positives. No, those nine positives were not in zip code 32960 or in zip code 32963. We have other zip codes here, but they weren't in those two uh, large areas. All righty, folks, we can take a look over here at the uh, Seven-day moving averages, it has fallen from 102.29 yesterday down to 84.71. 
and that was helped out a lot because we lost a big number over here yesterday. We scroll up here for just a little bit. You can see that yesterday we had a 178 in there. Uh, we had actually had a 115 in there on Monday. Let's go down here just a little bit further. So we are we lost one of the big numbers, which was really a good thing. That actually we lost the 178. There it is. That was yesterday, and that 178 dropped off. So that helped us a great deal. So that's why we got down to 84.71 with this our 55 deaths for the entire state of Florida. So we're happy with this 84.71. I'm going to take you to the moving average chart. It's a little hard to see here. Sorry about that. But look, this is where we are now, 84.71 on 10.19. That certainly is heading in the right direction. We were at 77.71 on 10.4. Uh, the lowest we've been lately was 76.57 on 9.8. But look where we were here just not too long ago. On 1014, we were at 115.57. So we're happy to see this number coming down. We got to keep that coming down. All righty, let's go take a look at the United States. Past 48 hours, I remind you each day when I put these up here, this is for the past 48 hours. And the number one state... We mean this in the worst position, number one, was 61 new deaths in the past 48 hours was Missouri. Florida was in second place with 48 new deaths in the past 48 hours. California was in third place with 36. Georgia, 31 in fourth place. Texas, 28 in fifth place. We'll scroll down a little bit further to Pennsylvania in eighth place. Uh, 20 deaths for Pennsylvania in eighth place. We'll go down just a little bit further here and take a look at Minnesota for our Minnetonka friends who aren't there now. They had uh, 17 up there in Minnesota, 17 uh, new deaths in the past 48 hours in 11th place. Massachusetts, 14 in 12th place. New York, 11 in 14th place. We'll go down a little bit further here. Take a look at Kentucky. Kentucky, 19. 18th place had five new deaths to report in the past 48 hours. Jersey, for Danny up in Jersey, okay, Danny, look at this. Four. Under five, you're okay. You're in the low uh, single digits. Four up there in Jersey. Let's keep driving those down before you leave there. Fly over Lizzie on uh, 25th. 25th position here was three. Very low single digits. That's outstanding. Utah, 26th place. Three new deaths in the past 48 hours. We like that number a lot. How about uh, Maryland, 28th place with one new death in the past 48 hours. That's for our friend Julie up there. And we'll take a look, go down here just a little bit further, and I don't see anything else that we normally report on. Sometimes we report on New Hampshire. New Hampshire had one new death in the past 48 hours. So that's a look at the states and how they compare with the new deaths. Now let's go over and take a look at the what we refer to as the global view. The global view is the USA cases, 8,160,132. The USA deaths, 219,765. And the global cases, 40,155,883. And the global deaths, 1,115,000. Oh, 79. Alrighty, folks, those are the numbers for the 19th of October for Monday, a new week and a new numbers chart. Alrighty, folks, I want to remind you, I did make a new video on Riders Gourmet Market. It's done. It's posted. It is on Facebook. It's uh, on Nextdoor. I think it's everywhere. Facebook, Nextdoor, and Instagram. It's about a six-minute video, and it was a walking tour of uh, the gourmet market. They keep getting new things in. They keep redoing the store a little bit, changing it around a little bit. Uh, it was a very busy. I did it on Sunday. It was very busy over there on Sunday, and they have good things. Lots of terrific pre-prepared food. In addition to that, you want some caviar? Yeah, they got caviar over there. They got that. They have champagne, wine. Uh, wine prices, no wine, over about uh, 26 bucks. That's a good thing. I don't recognize some of the wines. Uh, they are open from 7 a.m. until 8 p.m. every day. It's easy to remember their hours. 
And I uh, want to remind you again that uh, Coffee House 1420, go over and see my buddy over there. Coffee House 1420 is located at 2001 14th Avenue here in Vero Beach. It's where the old Jets and Appliance used to be on 14th Avenue, corner of 14th Avenue and 60. Stop in and see my friend Michael Glotz. Check out some of those berries and rolled oats and almonds and pecans and uh, honey granola. Oh, my goodness gracious. That's really, really good. Polo Deli. Stop by and see my friends over there at Polo Deli. They have the best prices in wine here on the island. They're on Cardinal Drive, right up the street from Writer's Gourmet Market. In case you don't know where Writer's Gourmet Market is, well, that's located right across the street from the Tides Restaurant. And uh, Beach Market, I keep saying every day, I keep checking on it to make sure how things are going. But uh, they're going. They're coming along fine. Of course, they had really hoping to be open by the 1st of November. That is just not going to happen. Not because of them. Everything was planned out great. What they didn't plan on was how long it was going to take to get their inspection. So they're gradually working through the inspections. And uh, it looks like almost a commitment that they'll be open before the 1st of December and maybe by Thanksgiving. But we sure do miss them, and they'll hopefully be open fairly soon. Also, remember one other thing. Please get a flu shot. You don't want to. You don't want to get all of a sudden start getting sick and say, "Do I have the flu or I have COVID nineteen? What do I? What do I have here?" And we don't need that going on right now. And by the way, so far more people die from the flu every year than from this pandemic we're involved in. And we have flu shots, so get a flu shot for heaven's sakes. Yeah, I know there's some of you out there that say, "I want to have one of those flu shots for all the tea in China." And there's also going to be people out there that says, "If there's a if there's a vaccine, I'm not taking it because it's Trump's vaccine." Oh yeah, Trump made it. Get out of here. Come on. We need to have a vaccine that works, and it's not going to hit the market until it's a good vaccine. Promise you that. No question about that. All righty, folks, uh, send me some pictures of the Pet Patrol, for the pets for the Pet Patrol. I had a cute little puppy up there yesterday. <laughs> I think he was probably an older guy, and he only had three paws. Oh, I was so felt so sad for him. Uh, but he was happy. His little tail was wagging. He was hopping around like a little bunny. He was just having a wonderful time. Okay, it's Monday. Remember... If you haven't pushed the like button, please push the like button. Don't be a part of the problem. Be a part of the solution. It's easier to wear a mask than a ventilator. I hope you have a very blessed Monday. It's the beginning of a new week. Rain's good out there. Helps those plants grow. Yep, can't have a rainbow without rain. And I hope you have a very blessed Monday, and I look forward to seeing you back here on Tuesday. Have a great day. Ron Kreider signing off.